Uh, We're going to begin today, Revelations 3, verse 8. Go ahead and stand for the reading of God's Word. Revelation 3, 8. What we're going to do today is I'm just going to talk to you. Is that cool? I'm not going to preach and I'm not going to teach. We're just going to have a conversation. I've said this before. It's kind of like we're sitting down at Starbucks across the table from you. All right. And we're just going to have a conversation. Is that cool? Revelation 3, 8. I know all the things you do and I've opened a door for you that no one can close. I have opened a door for you that no one can close. That's a good place to shout right there. Just wait. (laughs) I'm going to drop something on you. You'll be shouting by the end. But I'm not going to preach. We're just going to talk. So don't shout too much. (laughs) I'm kidding. You have little strength, yet you obey my word and did not deny me. Reach over, take somebody by the hand. We'll get into it. Father, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we just love you with all of our hearts. Thank you for an awesome church, a worshiping church, a praying church, church full of faith. Lord, today we've come just to see what you have for us for the next year. 2020 is so exciting, Lord. We know that great things are in store for us. So speak to us, speak to each heart that's in this room today. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. 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 You can be seated. Have you enjoyed the last two weeks? All right. God's getting you ready for this year. Touch three people, tell them, I've been thinking. I've been thinking. I like that. I like that, man. He's, he's running the aisles. That's cool. So it has to start in our thinking. It's the renewing of the mind, all right? You can't think defeated and live in victory. You can't think depressed and have a life full of joy. Amen? We're at a very important place in history. Not only is this a new year, but it's a new decade. Wow, I can't even believe it. we made it. Twenty, I told you last week, I thought the year 2000 would never get here. Here we are 20 years on the other side. Wow. <laughs> That's right, I haven't seen you since last year. Most of us have been trained to think daily. And then once a year we get close to New Year's and we think about a year. And then usually at the end of January we slip back into our old routines. But what I want to challenge you, this isn't the topic today, but I want to challenge you, think as a decade most of us were like, take it day by day, live day by day. January gets here, or we're getting in December close to January. We say, okay, I'm going to think about the next year. How many make plans a little bit, right? We make plans. But what I want you to do in 2020 is think about 10 years from now. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Because if we don't set any goals, I want to ask you, first of all, are you setting goals? If we don't set any goals, how do we know if we're moving? Does that make sense? All right. I know we get bogged down with life, but my question is, do you have any long-term goals? And that's not our topic, but I just want you to think. What are the goals for your life, for your family, for your marriage, for the future? And I'm not talking about New Year's resolutions. No, I'm just going to share something with you. You do with it whatever you want, all right? I've stopped making New Year's resolutions. Do you want to know why? This is just me. You can do whatever you want. When you fail in your resolution, what does it bring into your life? Guilt, shame, condemnation. Are you with me? I'm going to eat healthy this year. And you make it through the first week and the coworker comes in with a dozen donuts and you have this internal struggle. Oh man, I'm a weekend. I can do this. Joe, you can do this. About one o'clock, you've already had lunch, but that donut's looking really good. And you reach over and you eat that. And then here comes the guilt. I've already messed up. I might as well have two. Right? Or I'm going to work out this year. And I'm a, I make it through January, part of February, but then it starts to taper off. What happens? Here comes the guilt, the shame, and the condemnation. Anybody with me? You know what I'm talking about? A believer isn't supposed to be in bondage to anything, right? And yet we get in, just hang with me, we get in bondage to diets, workout routines. I know, I know I'm going to sound weird to some people, and some people don't want to hear it. Someone else will say, I knew it. Joe said we don't have to eat healthy. We don't have to work out. We're good. (laughs) Bring on the donuts, right? But here's what I've learned. When I guilted myself into getting on the treadmill and guilted myself into working out, I hated it. Anybody been there? You're like, I need to run. Okay. And it seems like two miles is 15, right? But when I got rid of the guilt, the shame, and the condemnation that I brought on myself, it became fun and I enjoyed working out. You see where I'm thinking? That's why I don't do New Year's resolutions anymore because it always brought on guilt, shame, and condemnation. I'd walk around feeling guilty just on the inside. Nothing sinful. I just felt bad on the inside. 
So whenever you have any area of your life, guilt, shame, and condemnation, as a believer, we need to take a close look at it and say, why is this bringing this into my life? Does that make sense? That's just my heart I'm sharing with you today. You do with it whatever you want. I'm sure somebody maybe watching online is thinking, that guy has lost his mind. But let me tell you, with the gospel of grace, people in this room are losing weight and getting in shape simply by believing the word of God. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise for that. It's awesome. What do you have to do? Believe. Everybody say believe. Believe. So I want to ask you this morning, how big is your God? And I'm not putting you down if you're working out and you set a New Year's resolution. Please (laughs) don't take that the wrong way. I'm proud of you for working out and eating right. That's good. But I want to ask you, how big is your God? Amen. So here's my question. Where are you going to use your faith? The just shall live by faith, right? We have to have faith as a believer. Are you only going to use your faith in the area of salvation, getting to heaven? Because you believe that Jesus died on the cross, he rose from the grave, right? I'm using my faith. I didn't see him physically do it, but I'm believing, using my faith, and that's where I stop. Or do I stop with with salvation and finances, but I don't believe he can heal my body? Or do I believe he can only heal my body, but he can't bless me financially? So where am I going to use my faith? Why not believe that God wants you healthy? Why not stand upon the word and believe for divine health? Amen? Amen. And then take communion and what? Believe. So you go to that weird church over there, right? (laughs) That believes that God can help you lose weight? Yes! (laughs) Yes! <laughs> yes, why? Because there's people in this room who are living it. Amen? Amen? It's awesome. Do you remember what Jesus always told his disciples? He'd always look at them and say, Oh, ye of way too much faith. <laughs> remember that? Yeah. Isn't that in your Bible? Maybe. No. He'd say, What did he say? Oh, ye of little. little faith. He never told anyone that they were believing way too much. But we're scared to death to believe too much, aren't we? What about the woman with the issue of blood? Did he tell her, take it easy, daughter, you're believing way too big. Dial it back a little bit. You're believing if you just touch the hem of my garment, you'll be totally healed. No, well, you're really believing way out there. He didn't do that, did he? He says, your faith has made you whole. We've been taught through bad teaching and the circumstances of life to not believe and not use our faith for the big things. Are you with me? But what's the big thing to God? salvation right you and i should all of us should be condemned to hell for our sinful actions and because we were born into sin jesus went to the cross and redeemed us and saved us right so when you believe upon him as your savior now i get a ticket to heaven i get to go to heaven that's the big one so that means anything else is small are you seeing this that's the big one so if he can save your soul from an eternity in hell don't you think he can take care of your finances? Yes. Amen. See, that's, that's low. Money's low on the list to God. Are you with me this morning? What about heal your body? Amen. Salvation, if that's the biggest, then everything else that comes in second. Does that make sense this morning? He can help get you out of debt. Did you know that? Amen. He can. It's awesome. Jesus never one time told anyone you're believing way too big. That's too much faith. <laughs> he never did. It's funny when you think about it. He always told them, you're believing too small. When he said, O ye of little faith, he was saying, O ye of little believing. If grace makes and faith takes, grace is what Jesus made available at the cross, and faith is how I access it, how I take it. Grace makes, faith takes. He was saying, why do you take so little? He's saying, oh, ye of little faith. In other words, he's saying, why do you take so little? I've provided all of this for you, and you're just happy with salvation and suffer through the rest of your life. You see this? Why do you take so little? I want you to get this in your heart and in your mind. Jesus never one time criticized anyone for believing too big. Have you ever thought about that? Isn't that powerful? Yes. Oh, ye of way too much faith. <laughs> So when people criticize that you're, you're believing God to lose weight, you're believing God to get out of debt, you're believing God to give you a better job and more finances, say, yes, <laughs> yeah, amen. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, so here we are. That wasn't even the topic. We're just talking, right? Across the table, Starbucks. Where's my mocha? I know. 
Well, here we are in 2020. Let's give the Lord praise. We made it. You remember last week when I said to leaving 2019 was like stepping out of a dark room and I was right here and I, I, it was prophetic at the end of the sermon. We didn't put it on the, on, online. But I said, uh, it's like stepping from a dark room through the curtains into the sunshine. Anybody remember that? Throughout the message last week and even the prior messages, two or three messages ago, when I released that word from the Lord, God spoke to Julie and said that 2020 is the year of the open door here at Freedom. That's awesome. When she told me that after service, she said, God told me this. I just started crying. And I went back and I looked at some of the sermons. And what, what you'll notice, if you go back and look at about four, four or five sermons ago, all the way up until last week, you'll notice that I'm saying things about doors and open doors. And I didn't catch it until he spoke to her and said, this is the year of the open door. Does that make sense? It's really cool. So I want to talk about that just for a few moments. And then... And we'll go to lunch or whatever you want to do. <laughs> Revelation 3.8. <laughs> I'm just having fun with you. Is that cool? <laughs> I know all the things you do. I have opened a door for you that no one can close. You have little strength, yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me. There's a few things that I want to point out to you today. Number one, God has been keeping a record. And what I'm going to share with you now, I'm getting ready to get more into a prophetic flow. And that means God is going to begin to speak through me. Are you ready? So I want you just to receive this with your heart. God has been keeping track of you. Someone in here, or maybe even watching online, you've been thinking that God has forgotten about you because of the things you had to suffer in 2019. And for some of us, it was a really tough year. All right, you went through some tough things. You felt abandoned. You felt all alone. You were hurt very badly by people who called themselves friends. You were unjustly accused of things that you didn't even do. You were wronged, but you never fought back, and you never even tried to defend yourself. And God says, I've been watching. I saw what happened to you. I've been keeping track of everything. I know what you've done. I saw when you wanted to fight back, but you held your peace. And this is a word for someone. God says, he says, I know all about it. When nobody else, maybe nobody else in your life, nobody else in the room knows what was going on. God says, I was keeping track the entire time. You were not alone. I didn't abandon you. I've been keeping a record. Whoever I'm talking to, you have little strength left. You feel like you barely made it into 2020. You almost feel like you left part of you back in 2019. And you want to get excited about a new year. When I get up here and I talk about 2020, you want to get excited and, and you clap and you go along with it. But you feel like you left part of you back in 2019. You were so hurt. And, you, and maybe you went through depression. I don't know what it was, but you're, you're coming out on the other side, but you don't feel like yourself. You're afraid to get your hopes up again. Because you're expecting more of the same. You, you just you think this year is going to be like the last one. Your strength is gone. Your vision is gone. Your hope is gone. Your excitement is gone. But God sent me here today to tell you, hold on. Touch three people, tell them, hold on. Hold on, hold on. He says, even in the midst of the toughest time in your life, even in the midst of the toughest time in your life, he says, you've kept my word. He says, I've been watching. You kept it in your heart. You couldn't stop believing. Even when the enemy threw everything he could at you and you wanted to quit and you wanted to give up, he said he would speak a word into your heart and it would strengthen you just enough to hold on. Everybody say, hold on. Hold on. You had every chance to walk away, but you stayed. Whoever I'm talking to, no one else even knows the struggle you had in 2019. It's an internal struggle. You haven't even shared it with the ones closest to you. You haven't told anyone, but God sent me here today to tell you, I heard you. I saw it, and I've been keeping a record. He saw your heart. He saw what was going on. Now, I don't even know if you're ready for this next part or not. You ready? He says, I've opened the door for you. You're not waiting on him to open it. He's not getting ready to open it. He's not fixing to, fitting to open it. <laughs> it's open. Everybody say, it's open. it's open. It's an open door. This is the year of the open door for everybody here at Freedom. What you've been believing for, what you've been waiting on, what you've been praying for, standing in faith, expecting, that door has just opened in your life. Let's give him praise. Amen? Amen. And here's the best part, that no one can close. I don't know what you've been believing for, but whatever it is, he said the door is open. Do you believe that this morning? Here's what I want you to see. A door doesn't do you any good if you don't use it. 
If you look up the definition for the word door, I, I was, as the Lord was sharing this, I was like, I just want to see what the, the dictionary says. It's a hinged, sliding, or revolving barrier at the entrance of a building room or vehicle. Check this out. Hinged, sliding, or revolving barrier. The same door that allows access into a room can also be a barrier to keep you out. Everybody say open door. But God says this is an open door in your life. See, I'm not shouting because God says this is the year of the door. I'm shouting because he says this is the year of the open door. Amen? Yeah. Amen. You've been upset because you feel like your life has hit a brick wall. You couldn't seem to move forward. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You just try and, and you just, it doesn't seem like you're getting any momentum. You're not moving forward. But you weren't up against a, a wall. You were up against a closed door. What does that mean? You were in the right place at the right time. You just didn't understand. The reason I'm not moving forward is because there's a door. And God just said, <laughs> somebody's getting this on the inside, amen? Because you, you were thinking, you were struggling. What, what's going on in my life? It feels like I'm not moving forward. Nothing's happening. You're in the right place. Just that door that you're getting ready to walk through was a barrier for a moment. Does that make sense? I've come with good news today. The door is open. The door is open. I don't care if you have to get, be like Al, get up, touch seven people, tell them the door is open. The door is open. Get up, touch seven people. The door is open. We're going to have church for a little bit. Come on. The door is open. The door is open. Amen. It's awesome. <laughs> the door is open. Let's give him praise this morning. The door is open. This is a prophetic word for someone. You've just been given access into what you've been believing for. I don't know what that is for you. I'm just telling you what God told me. Whatever you've been believing for, whatever you've used your faith for, God says, I just threw that door open. Now it's yours. Go possess it. Somebody say amen. 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 Go ahead. Give him praise. Come on. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. So we've been at the right place the entire time. That barrier that you thought was sent to stop you was actually a door, but it was shut. And now that door is open. So the only thing that is left is to walk through the door. This door is your point of access into the next season of your life. You get that? When you get ready to move into a new home and you enter through the door for the very first time, what's it like? You just get a new home and you walk through. You carry your wife through the door, right, guys? I'm just kidding. I'm messing with you. You go through, you're excited, you're happy, you're, you're making plans, you're dreaming about the future, right? God says, that's how you're supposed to walk through this next season. He says, I've opened the door for you, and from here on out, you go in excited, you're happy. Everybody say, smile. smile. Now smile. <laughs> go in with a smile on your face, planning for the future and dreaming. Somebody say amen. amen. God says, that's how we walk through this new open door. Because this is a new place. It's a new season. Wave goodbye to 2019 because this new season will not be like that. Amen? Amen? It may take you a while to become acclimated to the new environment you're in. It may take you a while because it's going to be totally different as you walk through this new door, this open door. If you look back at the sermons, God's been getting you ready for something very big. I went back and I started watching him just because as he's speaking, he speaks through me many times, with not, stuff that's not even in my notes. And I go back and, and he's getting you ready for something huge in your life. Anybody know that? You believe that? He's preparing you. He's getting you ready. And he says, now the door is open. So we know that we've been standing at a door and we didn't even know it. We thought that no progress meant we're up against the wall and, and there's nothing happening, but it's actually a door. And we know how to act as we go through the door, right? We go, we go in happy and excited, expecting great things. But how do I actually go through it? Because God can bring you to a door, but if you never go through it, you cannot gain access to what's on the inside. Think with me. We, if you come up to the church, you could come up and say, well, that's a nice door. <laughs> and Tom will open it. Come on in. That's nice. I think I'll fit through the door. Are you with me? And you just look at it and admire it, but never use it. You can't gain access to what's going on in here. Are you with me this morning? Everybody say open door. Open door. So how do I walk through this door? God's saying there's an open door in front of you. I want to do all of these wonderful things. And you're like, how do I access that door? Believe. Everybody say believe. believe. 
You have to believe that God has just opened a door in your life. You have to believe that on the other side of this door is a room full of blessings because grace makes and faith takes. I gain access to this open door and I walk through it with my faith, with my believing. Now, if you go home and you say, that was a nice little sermon talk, whatever that was today, that was, bravo, Joe, that was wonderful. And, and that's all you take away from it? This isn't for you. But if you say, I believe I heard from the Lord today and there's an open door in my life, I believe I'm getting ready to walk into a new season and you start using your faith and you start speaking those things, the door will fly wide open and you'll walk into this new season. Amen? Amen. So what do we have to do? Believe. All right, let's go to Hebrews 11, 1 and 2. We're going to use the New Living Translation. And here's what I want to do, is every time we read the word faith, I want to substitute the word believing. All right? So we'll read it normal, verses 1 and 2. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. Now let's back up. Believing shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their believing, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. All right, now let's go to verses 3 through 6. By believing, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It is by believing that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man and God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of believing. Verse 5, it is by believing that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. Here we go. Verse 6, and it is impossible to please God without believing. Amen. It's impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. What I want you to take home today is Jesus never criticized anyone for believing too much. Never. You can search the scripture. He never looked at anybody and says, dial it back a little bit. All right, are you with me? So good. I want you to get that in your heart. He never criticized anyone for believing too much. Man does, but God doesn't. Amen? Now let's go to Romans 3, verse 3. Romans chapter 3, verse 3. For New King James Version. For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Well, Pastor Joe said, we're, we're, I'm standing in front of an open door, I'm getting, and you go home and you get excited, and you tell your family, we're in a new season, and they're like, what? What if some do not believe? You don't need them to believe. You need to believe, amen? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Does their unbelief stop God from moving in your life? No. Well, God spoke to me today. He's going to heal my body. He's going to, he's going to deliver me from whatever, whatever he's going to sp speaks in your heart. And you go home and you tell somebody because you get excited. You ever been there and they burst your bubble? Yeah. Anybody ever been, been there? For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? No. It cannot stop God's faithfulness. Somebody say amen. You do not need everyone to agree with you and believe with you. All it takes is you. Amen? Amen. That's it. I want you to say this. Say, God opened this door. God opened this door. No one can shut it. No one can shut it. I'm, walking through it. I'm walking through it. I believe. I believe. I believe. What you have to understand, now we're going to close with this. This is something I heard several years ago. And when, he said, when the Lord said it's the year of the open door, I just wanted to share this with you. This is really cool. What you have to understand is that there are different types of doors. I'm going to show you doors in the natural, and then I want you, we're going to apply it to the spiritual, and we're almost finished this morning. So the first one I want to talk about is a keyed door. All right? I want you to think in the natural. You have to use the key to get in. It only opens if you have the right key. Get the right key, and that door opens for you, but that door is a barrier until you find the key that fits in the lock to open the door. Are you with me so far? This door in your life opens when you get certain principles right. When you use the right key, the door will open in your life. So I'll give you an example. How does the devourer get rebuked in your life? The key of tithing. 
See that? How do you walk in divine health? The key of the Last Supper, communion. You see this? This type of door only opens when you have the right key. There are different doors in our lives. So that's the first one, a keyed door. The second one is a door that you have to push on. And I'm sure we've all been places where there's a bar that goes across and it doesn't open until you push that, usually at schools, right? Your actions open this door. Your act of moving forward opens the door. It requires you to move forward. If you just stand there and look at that door, that door isn't doing anything until you push it. Are you with me? It requires action on your part to get through that door. This door will not open until you move forward. Thinking about it won't open it. Preparing for it won't open it. Getting excited about walking through the door will not open that door. You physically have to move forward in order to get through the door. Are you with me? This type of door will not open in your life until you start moving forward. There are some doors that God will put in your life until you make a decision, I'm moving forward for the Lord. Those doors will not open. If I'm just playing games with him, just messing around with God, there are doors he will not open. But the moment I make a decision, all right, I'm moving forward. For me, it was in the year 2000. I said, God, my, my life is just in shambles. I said, God, if you never bless me, if you never speak to me, I know you're real, and I'm going to worship you no matter what. And I'll give you just a quick story. I had a DUI. I lost my license for five years. I tried everything. I was 19 years old when it happened. So they threw the book at me as a zero tolerance law had just gone. Lost it for five years, and I struggled getting it back. In the year 2000, I said, Lord, I give you everything. I don't care if you never speak to me. I don't care if you never bless me. I moved forward. When I moved forward, the door opened. Four months later, I got my license back. After waiting five years. Do you see that? Some doors will not move, will not open until you move, and then God says, okay. But as long as I was, because I played games with him up until that point, and that door was, was shut and locked. Are you with me this morning? So you can pray about it, you can get excited, you can prepare for it, you can talk about it, but God will not open some doors in your life until you move forward. Number three, the third type of door, is a door that you pull on. You have to turn the knob and pull. This door is a barrier until you turn the knob and pull. Your strength helps open the door. You can pull and pull and pull, but until you turn the knob, this door will not open for you. This door requires that you slow down. You ever tried to get out of a door that you have to pull to open? (laughs) This door requires, okay, slow down, and I may even have to take a step back and then walk through the door. Is this good stuff? Amen. These doors automatically slow you down. All right? This door will not open in, t- in your life until you slow down, and sometimes it requires I take a step back, take a deep breath, and say, okay, I've got to slow down, or I'm going to get hurt or hurt someone else. All right? The fourth kind of door is a combination or a keypad. It takes a combination These doors will not open until you get the combination right. So now you're learning and growing. You're learning about prayer. You're learning about worship. You're on fire for the Lord. Before you were able to pray, and a door would open in your life. Lord, I'm just going to pray, and this door opens. You get a new job or whatever the door is, and you're excited. But the next door you come to, you pray, and nothing works. This time you prayed for the door to open, nothing happens. So now you begin to worship because you love God even with a closed door. Before, you used to pout. And then I, I, okay, Lord, and you prayed and the door opened. Now you're at the next door of life, and I prayed and nothing happened. Instead of getting angry and frustrated with God, I say, it doesn't matter, it's a closed door. They said no on the job or whatever it is. Now I'm just going to worship, and the door flies open because now it's a combination lock. You have the prayer right, you have the worship right, and God says, all right, I'm taking you to the next level. You see this this morning. That's a combination Now the door flies open. Number five. This is one of my favorites. This is the automatic door. You know what I'm talking about at Walmart? When you don't have to do anything? They open when you get in the right vicinity. You don't have to use any effort at all. You don't have to push the door. You don't have to pull the door. You don't have to get the combination right, type in something. All it takes is for you to be in the right place at the right time. And when you get close enough to the door, the door flies open. You can be out in the parking lot staring at the door saying, that's a nice door, that's beautiful. Boy, they really cleaned it. You can barely even see it, right? 
but nothing happens. But the moment you get in the right vicinity, the doors open. There are some doors in your life that will not open for you until God gets you in the right place. Are you with me? There are some promotions in your life that you want and you've been praying for, but you're not in the right place. God says when you get in the right place at the right time, that door will open for you and you can walk into the next season of your life, but you're not in the right vicinity yet. So you have to be able to identify these doors in your life. Is this making sense this morning? Then without any effort or even thinking about it, the door just flies open. You don't stress out about getting into Walmart, do you? <laughs> you just walk through the door, right? <laughs> yeah. Some of us do. <laughs> Number six, timing doors, all right? Time, they have timers on them. This is like at a bank vault, a big door, right? These doors won't open until it's the right time. So you can push, you can pull, you can try the combination, you can try to get in the right vicinity, but this door will not open until it's the right time. It can't open before it's time because you will lose everything of value that's on the inside. A thief breaks, breaks into the bank in the middle of the night. They can try everything, but they can't get in because that door will not open until 8 o'clock in the morning. Are you with me? It's a timing door. There are timing doors in your life that God says, I want to open for you, but it's not the right time. You have to understand. You have to understand this because you can become frustrated. Well, I prayed and I worshiped and I did all this, and I'm in there. I think I'm in the right vicinity. I think think this is the right place, but it wasn't the right time. Does that make sense? See, I wanted to become a youth pastor, and God put that in my heart. I mean, heavy, and He sent me to Donnelly's for a year and a half. It wasn't the right time. The desert. The desert yeah, exactly, exactly. It wasn't the right time. I had to wait on his timing for that door to open. Then I could walk through it. And when it opened, I walked through it. But it wasn't time. Why wasn't it time? Because he had a mission for me to accomplish at Donnelly's, and he was also preparing my heart. Many times he will give you a word, and he'll say, this is what I'm going to do in your life. And for me, it was like a patience test. Are you still going to serve me even though you're making magazines at 3 o'clock in the morning and you want to be teaching kids the word of God? Are you with me? Do you really want it that bad? Or are you going to give up on your dream in six months? It was a timing issue. So whenever the time was right, God says, okay, you're finished. Now I'm opening this door for you. Does that make sense this morning? Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, this is pretty good stuff today. <laughs> it's a timing door. You've been asking God why a certain door hasn't opened in your life yet. He says it's a timing door. He hasn't opened it because he's been protecting what's on the inside of you. There's something valuable on the inside. He couldn't open it too soon because the enemy would have stolen this next blessing from you. He's speaking to somebody today. He's already spoken to me about this. He can't open a door. There's a timing door in your life. There's, I don't know what it's for in your life, but he can't open it yet because there's something valuable that the enemy would steal from you. If he opened it too soon. Does that make sense? So you just have to trust his timing. But now he has you at the right place at the right time. And he says, this is the year of the open door. Amen. Amen. Let's give him praise. <laughs> Amen. This is the year of the open door. So I don't know what it is in your life, what that door is, but God says it's open. So now how do we get through it? We walk through it. We believe. Lord, this is, this is the year. Last year was the year of increase, right? He spoke that to us. And it was a struggle. But if you stop and you look back, you can see where things increased in your life. I can. Things increased. And sometimes, I don't know what, who this is for, but sometimes he does pruning so that, just like a, sh a shrub, you have to prune off the bad branches so it will grow and will increase. He says, there's some things I had to prune out of your life in 2019 so that you could grow. Are you with me? I had to remove some things that were holding you back. And the pruning process, imagine for the shrub, that'd be a painful process. <sniffs> Cutting things off, right? But it's for its good. And God says, in 2019, I've pruned some things out of your life, removed some things out of your life so that you can grow up healthy. Amen? Amen. You received that this morning? Amen. Amen. Let's give him praise. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat>